color substitution using value as a guide. How to paint a colorful elephant. So I've just got my uh, new palette, uh, White Knights. I normally paint uh, with Daniel Smith, but anyway, I thought I'll try it, uh, a new set of uh, colors and see what, uh, you know, after all, I've, I've heard many good things about this, uh, this set. Uh, so when it arrives, uh, it was really exciting, really, really fun. I'm going to tell you what I would I do with it so that you can maybe learn something about uh, the, uh, the values of, uh, of colors. Uh, you know, of course, the first thing you do is uh, you, you, you unpack it and uh, they're all beautiful colors anyway um, and uh, highly pigmented and I, I do recommend for beginners but uh, for advanced beginners, you might want to consider getting, you know, Daniel Smith or some other brand that has more, uh, you know, like fast or even more uh, uh, better pigment actually. So, um, you know, as you see, I unpacked it, I put, um, you know, all the colors uh, actually according to how they arrange it in the box didn't really want to change any of the uh, the arrangement so that I can just refer back to the uh, to the uh, to the photograph that they have at the back of the box um, the graphics and I can refer to it so that I don't confuse the colors right, so uh, kind of speed up the process here as you can see uh, put in all the colors I really love the pigment I think it's it's quite it's quite nice and according to what I've read uh, elsewhere they are fairly light fast as well so first thing first let's do a swatched and, uh, and as you can see I actually put a, a black marker line across all the boxes and uh, the intention there is to see how opaque some of the colors are. although uh, they give uh, the indication of opaqueness um, you know opaque semi transparent and transparent uh, I still want to see how much it is because you know opaqueness is actually there's a gradient right there's a uh, very opaque or to you know somewhat opaque so it's always nice to do your own swatch to just get a feel for the color right so as you can see I, I've covered uh, most of it and uh, again the colors are brilliant and fairly, uh, very beautiful actually I, I'm actually surprised, surprised uh, at how uh, brilliant the color is and I think they'll be quite nice for the type of painting I like to do with it so as you can see I've um, uh, scanned the swatched and you know the, the colors are indeed very very nice um, you know beautiful I've also translated to black and white using Photoshop and yes you can see the colors has a certain value to it and now I've gone back to the colors and I've put a marker on uh, you know from 1 to 5 where the value of the color stays so you can see I even mark it uh, on my palette 1 2 3 uh, there are some other markings like granulations and opaqueness and so on but uh, when I paint I want to know whether the the colors give me a one a two or three or four so let's let's try this uh, on a simple sketch and you you will get to know what I'm trying to say so if you look at this simple uh, elephant um, yeah, uh, photograph uh, and uh, you know I observe the very dark shape uh, in the uh, photograph itself uh, I'm just marking it for you so you can see very clearly. Uh, if you want to follow along, I'll give you uh, some tips as well. So as you can see, uh, there are some hard edges on the dark and then there's some soft edges where I've just hashed it. You can see, uh, I'm just studying this photograph for the sake of uh, studying it so that when I paint it, I can go very quickly uh, knowing where are the soft and the hard edges. And uh, I, it's approximation, there's nothing uh, specific about it or you know I'm not being very, trying to be very accurate uh, as you can see later the, the elephant itself will turn out to be colorful because I've substituted all the colors uh, and try to be accurate with the value so at a at a broad uh, base space uh, shape uh, I use uh, colors that gives me value of one to two out of five and those at the dark uh, I will use four and five all right so uh, in order to uh, to do this uh, sketch, uh, I basically you know do a very simple sketch. In fact, I I, I sort of mangled the elephant. Doesn't matter. It's just a simple illustration illustration and example. So 
and I was a bit in a hurry, <laughs> so didn't really sort of accurately draw the elephant, if you will. I think I've uh, made it a bit skinnier than it it, it should be. Uh, but anyway, as you, as you see, it actually turns out quite well, well, uh, as uh, as well as can be. So there you go. Uh, the parts where I've observed the dark shadow. Uh, and the parts where you know it's the behind of the elephant, the, the shadows on the ground, uh, some parts of uh, the. These are the brushes I'm using. The two white one on top are very small brushes. They are in fact a hundred on num number one, and th those at the bottoms are just sable four to six basically. So now that the drawing is finished, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow my own instruction uh, you know the the background I kind of splatter with just uh, one and twos um, basically the colors that I've uh, you know, put as one and twos uh, and simply splat splatter just to create a sense of a, a chaotic background uh, I actually don't, didn't like the green so one of the trick is actually not to make green which means that you should not mix yellow with blue uh, and you know the analogous colors of yellow orange reds are all okay right so uh, clear that up uh, and uh, right after this just use a hair dryer to dry it off uh, very quickly because i'm really out of time <laughs> and uh, as you can see the colors dry really really much well very much lighter usually about 30 40 percent lighter in this case uh, so now i'm ready to put in the dark so the darks uh, consist of uh, purples blues and even red, um, I use uh, colors that I've marked uh, values of four and five, uh, even three when I charge it in. Uh, doesn't really matter, but anyway, uh, just to give it a bit of a variety of uh, warm and cool. But as you can see, um, you know where I've marked as uh, dark early on, where we have uh, studied, uh, we can very quickly go into it. That that patch right there needs a bit of a soft edges, but we'll we'll come to that later. So as you can see that. The, uh, the the dark consists of purple, red, blues. Um, actually, it doesn't matter what color you put in, as long as the value is correct, you it will be fine. Uh, so, in fact, the whole tutorial is really about this: get the values right, but the colors is, you know, you can substitute it with any color. Um, hot red uh, for variety. Uh, the shadows really going in hard with a very deep blue or purple and. Again. Uh, and as you can see that the shadows anchor the uh, the painting to some extent uh, the bottom of the feet of the elephant really is a, 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 a tree right tree as in like uh, value three out of five so um, you know I'm conscious of the fact that I don't go from one straight to five I try sometimes to mix uh, or you know gradate it uh, from one to three to four to five so there's a bit of that uh, of course, uh, you can be very aggressive with the uh, gradation, but you know it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's really up to you. So as you can see, I'm slapping on colors that are value at one, two, a bit of three, but uh, a whole lot of one and twos according to my palette and how I've uh, coded it. So in some way, this is sort of uh, coding your you know watercolor or paint by numbers, if you will, <laughs> right? That's my version of uh, painting by, by numbers. So as you can see, I continue to uh, charge in various colors. Uh, you know, it's mostly orange, sort of, right? It's turning out to be golden, <laughs> right? But it's okay. I mean, uh, and ah, there you go. I'm softening the edges of that patch, as we have discussed earlier when we were analyzing the uh, the value map. Um, yeah. So now for a bit of uh, soft edges, soft edge diffuse background very uh, charged with a lot of water uh, very light not too much water of course yeah. but uh, while the paper is wet uh, charge in some blues uh, for contrast charge in some red again for contrast make sure the uh, the shapes edges are soft and diffuse and with that your eyes will see it as background now i'm ready to use my really small brushes as you can see the Double zero or the uh, the 100 data rounding graduate uh, very very tiny brushes to give me the sort of lines that uh, I wanted uh, again blue on dry orange uh, you know a mixture of it's 
sort of show through. Be very caref care careful with the way you draw the lines. Make sure that it's not too thick and not too much. I actually forgot a patch of, uh, of uh, the, the legs there, so I'm just making it up now. Um, putting a bit of uh, number three or value three with uh, basically light orange uh, mixed with a bit of red in it. Uh, that's just to make sure that uh, the value one, two doesn't go straight to five, but there's a bit of a buffer uh, with uh, the value three. Um, and in this case, it's just to you know create a bit of a three-dimensional shape. And that's it. I hope you enjoy that. Uh, if you like this sort of tutorial, please make sure you like and subscribe my channel. <laughs>